Good morning. Another beautiful day, Christmas Eve. Uh, got here before Steve again. It freaks him out. <laughs> he comes to work. He's been coming to this place for 10 years and he opens it up with his systematic way every day. And then just lately I've been rocking up before him and he freaks out when he gets here. The gate's already open and the door's on. Open, the alarm's off. And then he sees me tinkering around in here. Um, today's, uh, first of all, thank you for everyone's comments on these last few vlogs that I've been doing. Like it's humbling and it like it gets me in, in the heart when I read how um, it, it may have affected some of you. Um, so today really is the last day before Christmas and then we leave on Boxing Day. So we've got to get this car up and going and it's looking very promising now. We are definitely going in the right direction. Still waiting on a loom from Narva for the spotties. But other than that, it's kind of tidying up and getting the wheel alignment right. There's a bit of mucking around we've got to do with the spaces. Uh, wiring up the locker. Um, yeah, a bit of wiring bits and pieces actually. So, uh, oh, fitting the bush barriers, which we're going to do next. I'm going to clean the car. But kind of, I seem to have accidentally put a theme to each one of these vlogs, which wasn't intentional at the start, but it's just kind of happening. So like, because I'm finishing stuff off today, I thought there's something that I always battle with in my life and it's done versus perfect. I'll explain what I mean by that through the day. Um, so I can wash it, look in the rear view mirror. So, something I've never really been shy about is, is transparency. Just give the car a wash while I talk to you. It's busy. Um, yeah, so I think I'm through this sort of topic. I'm about to tell you about all of my personal imperfections. Uh, but, you know, it's all right. I can, they're mine. I can live with them. Um, like, I'm not... I'm a person that if there's a choice between perfection and done, I generally pick done because I always want to keep moving forward and get stuff done. And that's one of, I think, one of my little qualities is like I'm pushing forward, getting stuff done, always just move forward, move forward, move forward. But at the same time, sometimes I, um, <laughs> I brush over stuff that, that sometimes I shouldn't. And it's a real challenge. I'm, I'm doing it as we speak. Like, have a look at these sliders. Car's all wet though. Uh, not, the powder coaters were shut. So I ended up um, going and buying some of the, the paint and tried painting them, that didn't work. And I bought that sort of body liner Raptor paint. And it's, they're looking good, but like they, because everything was a rush, it didn't come with screws. So I went through my screw drawer and um, like I've got, the bolts at the top here but I'm missing one there and I know I'm not going to get time to find more screws before I go away but I kind of do this to myself and and this is a constant little battle I have because I've got to get this done and I've got to get it out so I can move on to the next thing that I've got to do and do that by halves and then go on to the next thing but there is times where um again this is why I have people like Steve and and, and Matt around me because uh, they'll say, nope, just David, hold on. Let's let's deep dive into this, drill down and just get this perfect before it goes out. Let's get this design perfect. So, so all the prototype stuff that ends up getting bolted to my car is all the imperfect stuff. And then we go away and do it again. And then that becomes a product and we, we um, yeah, I need help with that sort of stuff. Actually, the more I sit here quietly on my own and wash this car, I keep thinking about all the imperfect things that I've done. YouTube, for example. If you've been watching any of my videos, the first 100 videos, I reckon, were pretty bad. The audio was bad. I was using my iPhone, I don't know, 4 or whatever I had at the time. So I didn't have any camera equipment. I didn't have any mics. 
I was just learning. I didn't have any money back then. And um, like, so, but I got into the game of YouTube with all those imperfect things. And it took a hundred videos, I reckon, to learn how to kind of make one, um, how to edit one, where to find the music, uh, the free music, where to do all of these things. So it was a learning process by putting out all of these imperfect videos. One that comes to memory actually is probably one of my most popular videos. It's got a hundred and, I don't know, 80,000 views, something like that. And that's the first video I made after I broke my neck. I wasn't even actually supposed to be driving. I, I um, took my neck brace off because I was gone mad. I was basically stuck in the house for 12 weeks. And um, I went out to Port Gawla and found this little spot uh, where um, I could film what not to do when full driving in sand. Um, uh, storyboarded it all out. So I actually did plan a little bit, I guess. Um, went out with a drone, filmed it. No idea that it was going to actually be a half decent video. And that's it. Like one in, I don't know, 50 or 20, probably 50 videos, I reckon, ends up being something really good. But I can never pick which one it's going to be. Sometimes it's a 10 minute video, sometimes it's a four minute video. Who knows, it might be this one. <laughs> but, um, like, just like, instead of letting the limitations of being perfect, because I knew I wouldn't be able to be, like, move my neck in that video. I was very stiff. Um, knowing that, like, with, you know, uh, a lot of the other limitations I had with myself at that time, like, I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> um, I, I went up in painkillers big time uh, for that video and um, went out and, and shot it, came back, and it turned into something. So that was one of those cases where like just getting out there, getting it done was better than like, you know, bringing camera people out with me, setting up shots and that, that was just what I said was a good video on that one, I guess. place we do need perfection is wheel alignment. Have a look at this. He's going to have to buy a bigger wheel alignment bed just on the edge there. <laughs> and off there. Oops. I was just speaking to Steve. What a freaking legend this bloke is. Um, I was talking to him about the poke on the wheels and that um, we just got a, like a batch of flares in. And he goes, we'll go get some. I'm like, what do you mean go get some? He goes, yeah, we'll put them on. Right, like, no, we'd have to paint them, cut them, glue them. Or like Sikaflex, he's a ton of Sikaflex on them. And he's like, yeah, go on, do it. Like he's on holidays. He's gonna work on my car on holidays. But yeah, we, luckily we did get these containers because now it's full of flares. Got heaps of them in here, so. I'm going to pick some up and go and put that um, body liner stuff on there, the Raptor looking stuff, and have flares for this trip too. This is like turning out so good. So, so, so good. Um, uh, can't help thinking though, is this going to be another one of these times where done is better than perfect? Or, I don't know. But Steve, he's my advisor on this stuff, so he'll set me down the right path. I can do perfect, and I kind of have to for my day job because... Um, in cataract surgery, you don't kind of want to see, you have to see and have to calculate what lens um, has to be used and that takes time and detail to do that. Uh, at the same time, um, when you're planning for the surgery, like you have to think of everything. If something goes wrong, uh, you have to have the answer or you have to have the other product or you just have to be ready for everything and that's kind of my job in theatre. And I sell like the machines that they use for cataract surgery too. It's called a, a FACO and it's like a little mini jackhammer that jackhammers the lens uh, in your eye out and then uh, aspirate, sucks it up um, and puts it I don't know, into a little cartridge somewhere. So I can do perfect, but I think to myself, like I'm 
kind of one of these jack of all trades. I'm not like brilliant at anything, but I'm not bad at a lot of stuff. Uh, I've, technically I'm a tradesman. So I, when I left school, I went and did a pre course in electrical and refrigeration. Did about a year of that and hated my boss. Ooh, that's where the pattern started, I think. Uh, and um, quit and then the next job that came up, like I quit on a Thursday and then on the Saturday in the paper, back then you looked up jobs in the newspaper, and it said optical mechanic for um, National Pharmacies Optical. And I, I didn't even know what it is. I'm gonna have a crack at it. I applied, uh, they interviewed me, did a day on the job, and then I started a, a four year uh, trade in optical mechanics. I was actually the last optical mechanic to go through the course in South Australia, and then like machines took over. Um, but they did give me like that background knowledge in optics to go and have a career in optics, selling surgical microscopes, uh, ophthalmic diagnostic equipment, and now ophthalmic surgical equipment. Um, Weirdly, I've got all this knowledge and I'm moving away from that. But anyway, wheel of, Steve tells you the wheel alignment was quite the challenge. I've just driven it for the first time. I am so, 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 so happy with this car and to be back, back as a Y62 owner. I'm gonna just do a little run around and show you. These wheels, the wheels, love the wheels. I'm stoked, totally stoked. So bush barriers on, put the flares up against the bush barriers, mark them, cut the bush barriers, paint the flares, fit the flares, finish the electrical, and we're done. Bush barriers are on. So now I've just mark them up with the flares in place. Now I'll cut the bush barriers, Steve's gonna sand them. Interesting, this set of flares we've got um, doesn't, well, it's not scuffed up like the other ones that I've seen, it's already shiny. Still have to paint it or wrap it, but the same. Um, this is getting pretty tight, so we've called in another mate, Mark. Uh, cheeky plug here for Byford Services if you need any auto elect work done, especially around a 62 since he owes one, owns one. Um, he's, he's the guy to go to. But uh, yeah, Harrop locker just getting tidied up. My Some of my lights and loom and stuff hasn't even arrived yet, so I can't do anything about that. Um, and then we'll start painting. So. Probably can't quite see it. We've got an asymmetric design. It's, I'll show you later, but there's a different design and colouring on this side to the other side. Because it rolled over the, the, um, the guard. So it's, uh, it's like this part. Scooted down to my tan and got some sandpaper because I, me as a person, I'm a measure once, cut twice kind of guy. And it's something I need to work on. And Alarm bells are going off right now because I tend to do this more and worse when I'm under the pump, when I'm, there's a timeline, it's always the eve of a trip or today is Christmas Eve. And yeah, alarms are going off in my head because I just did, um, we're about to cut the flares and I just marked them once, didn't check. And Steve's now cutting them over there on my mark. And this is, this is this is the time that I actually need to work better at this and slow down, recognize that uh, I'm rushed, which means I'm likely to do this. I'm highly productive, by the way. I get a lot done, just low quality, but it's something I need to improve. And there's a bit of a chuckle. When I go to Steve's, because I do a lot of my R&D for all our parts at Steve's, I can never find a tape measure. Never, or a blade to open our boxes and all that. So this is kind of, Fitting, it's gonna be his Christmas gift and a laugh for me. <laughs> I bought him heaps of tape measures and knives. Um, 
and it's going to be a mental reminder from now into the future i'm going to remember this image which will probably end up being a thumbnail for this video measure more often than you cut there's five tape measures three blades that's my i'm going to remember this moment Ready to go. Steve, got your present. Thank you. See what's in there? No. Take it away. You. <laughs> One for you. Yeah. Thank you. One for me. Yeah. And see what else in there? Yeah. See. And under that. And a lot. <laughs> and more tape measures. <laughs> so we can put one on every bay. Right. David keeps losing it for me. That's what it is. He just puts it where he leaves it. You know? Out of interest, that one flare that you cut, did you cut it on my mark? Nope. <laughs> it was about one and a half centimetres off. <laughs> we did laugh. He knows me too well. Thank you, David. <laughs> Introducing the Steve Allen spray booth. Oh, oh gee. Hey, look at that. That's looking really good. How close can we get? Wow. That's going to really go nice with the um, with the with the sliders and the the front bar, and eventually when we get the rear bar. Look at the texture of that out of a can. That's good. Nice work. What do you say? Good job, Bob. Good job, Bob. <laughs> sicker, sicker, sicker flex and lots of it. It's coming up. We're getting late in the day. We're just about to put them on. Everything, everything can't be done, but we're just going to get as much done as possible and live with it essentially but I'm happy I'm happy how good is this all looking doing the bonnet protector now and I'm trying this doesn't come natural but I'm reading the instructions it's taking like twice if not three times longer Annoyingly, I'm doing it properly and the thing will probably stick on, whereas the one on my last patrol ended up rubbing through the paint. But this is like, this is hard for me to do something so slowly, especially like there's only a few hours left. Alright, did it properly and I must admit, it turned out perfect. That's exactly what it should look like. My other one kept nudging down there, and rubbed through the paint there, right on the crease. This one just sits perfectly because I read the instructions and did what I was told. How good does this look, by the way? Let's come back. Let's go back to the bush bay with that one. Sick. It's done, like it's done. Finished, done, I can take it away. It feels like a miracle. More stuff got happened to it than I ever thought, thanks to that man over there. And it's done right and properly, and it looks killer. I'm so happy with it. If you're still watching, <laughs> good on you, because I don't mean these vlogs to take so long, but I've just got a lot to say. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a detailed rundown around the whole car. Everything's happened. I'm going to talk my way through it and um, you can see it all. Please ask questions in the comments of this vlog so I know what to cover tomorrow. That's it. That's it for today. Signing off. Love this stuff. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it.